What's up folks, your boy here, Nazri Jameson. Today's first episode is gonna be all about where you get your meats from and what meat we use. Take a look. The idea for Beard Brothers came from my brother-in-law who told me to look into barbecue. I was a chef and I thought, yeah, it, it should be easy. You slap the meat on the grill. I never thought that I would be so wrong about it. Barbecue is a whole other game, you know. I've been loving it since the day I started five years ago, and I've, I'm still, I'm still looking for that perfect barbecue to come out. I was self-taught. Whatever knowledge I had from my chef training, I tried bringing it back to the barbecue, and basically, I was a YouTube student. <laughs> I would be looking into guys like Aaron Franklin, you know, Myron Mixon, Big Mo Kaysen. He's the one that you want to look into when it comes to like good brisket knowledge, you know. And all the other guys, they got good knowledge too. When we started off, nobody was doing barbecue. I mean, nobody was doing barbecue at a good scale. My dream was to get Malaysians to enjoy barbecue. First three years that I was doing this thing, it was at the back of a house of my wife's grandmother's place. And, you know, it was like, it, it was a little spot. I had like a small smoker, it was an Oklahoma Joe. I'd be cooking from that small little place and I'd be doing deliveries. It was a homegrown effort. Looking into the end of 2016, a lot of people were asking when I was going to open up a place because there were a lot of people lining up, but a lot of them couldn't sit down and eat and enjoy the barbecue fresh. I, I sort of made a promise to them. I said, look, you know, you guys have been supporting me well. I want to give back to you guys. I look for a place. We can all have fun, you know, sharing barbecue with each other. We looked around. We found out Tropicana Avenue, which is where we are right now. So, yeah, that's how we started off. You know, when we first started out in the house delivering, we were looking at about 20 to 30 kilos of meat being ordered a week. Right now, we, <laughs> we're going in the hundreds, uh, we, we, we're going in the tons. Again, it's because of you all and your support that we, we're able to, to, to provide you guys with the best of what we can provide, you know. And I appreciate that, that you guys have been supporting us for a long time. You can't avoid the fact that there's a lot of barbecue guys that opened up right after we opened up, you know. But competition is good. And having more of a barbecue community around you makes you able to share ideas from the other guys as well. Look, seriously, we try to give you the best that we can give. And I want you guys to feel that love, that same love that we have for the meats that we cook because every piece of meat is given its individual respect. All right, you guys, you know a little bit about our history at Beard Brothers BBQ. I want to show you what it is over here that we do with our meats, where we get the meats from, what types of meats that we use, and a little bit about how you're going to get these meats off from a whole carcass of a steer or a cow. Now listen, we use only Australian meat right now at Beard Brothers BBQ and we use Angus meat. You know, we use really high quality meats for your barbecue. Just for illustration purposes, I bought a whole cow. Now this cow was raised over here in Malaysia. It's from Pahang. And basically, I want to show you guys where your brisket comes from and where your ribs come from. Now your ribs, your short ribs will be coming around from around this area over here. Now where I'm going to cut is if I am turn this thing around here, this is the front leg of the cow over here and this is the body. Your brisket that you come over to Beard Brothers BBQ, the brisket that you have, it comes from just underneath of this pocket here. So it's this whole this whole side here it's the chest part of the steer and that's where the brisket comes from this part okay the ribs just around here all right this over here because the steer was a brahmin cow it has a hump all right i'm going to be showing you how to cut this down first thing we're going to do is take off the ribs all right we're going to take off the ribs the rib part over here the rib eye 
So I'm gonna cut this downwards this way and take this part out. And then after that, we're gonna try to take this front leg out so that we can get to the brisket and I'll show you guys what the brisket looks like when it's cut. That there, folks, is your ribeye steak. Now, again, you have to remember, this is a Malaysian steer over here. It's not an Australian steer. It's, it, it's a smaller breed of cow. The steers that you get in Australia are probably like 500 kilos around there. This cow was about 300 plus, so not that big. But you get an idea of where your ribeye come from. This is it. That's a beautiful piece of meat there. And we're gonna process it so it can become like a tomahawk, all right? This here is after fabricating the steel, I've got the front leg of the cow, the front leg of the steel, and we've got here the brisket. That is the brisket from here all the way down around it. That here is the brisket, but that's it. That's the money meat, that's the king. For me personally, this is the king of meat. Talk about tenderloins and all that, yeah, good steak cuts. But when you want to take something slow and slow, this baby here. That's what you should get. We're gonna cut it around and go around that way. And that there, that there is our brisket, okay? So, let's get into it. You gotta stay as close as you can to the bone. You wanna get as much meat off as possible. Alright, no wastage. Alright, that there, my dear folks, this is the brisket. You got your point over here, your point end, and then you got the flat down here, which, you know, we gotta, we, we gotta clean that up a bit. All this hard fat over here, we don't really use it, so that can be taken off. But that's the flat, that's here the point, this here's the brisket, that's the king. Now I've had a profound respect for butchers after I've tried doing this myself and really putting my soul into it, butchers really don't have it easy. So please, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any butchers out there that you know, give them a kiss on the cheek and say thank you to them for cutting up the cow for you, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, this year is what you come to our place for. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about what we do over here and how we process things over here. If you like that video, please give a like, subscribe, share the love. If you got any comments for me, you got any advice for me, which I would really love to listen to, put it down in the comment section below. And I love you guys. You guys have been there for me a lot. And I really appreciate all the support that I get from all of you. Until next week, I'll see you soon, alright?